Three months ago, I made a video saying why I think Walgreens is a value trap, and spoiler alert, I still think that is true. We'll come in here and take a look at Walgreens' Q4 and full year 2023 results that they just announced this morning. We'll take a look at the full year highlights, take a look at guidance made over at Walgreens, and some key important news that just came out. And as always, take a look at the technical charts over at Walgreens. This one has been in an absolutely free fall mode. As always, if you are new to the channel and find this type of content valuable, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. We are on the road to hit 600 subscribers and your support would mean a lot. Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker symbol WBA, just reported their Q4 2023 results this morning. Over the past year to date, the stock is down close to 35% and over the past one year is down 30%. And I believe that takes into account today's gains of close to 7%. The street did react positively to the news of Walgreens' earnings. They still have close to an 8.5% forward dividend yield. That is massive. That is close to $1.92 per share. And we'll take a look into if this is really sustainable or is the dreaded dividend cut coming soon. Taking a look at Walgreens' fiscal year 2023 results, they posted sales of close to $139 billion. That was good for 5.6% growth on a constant currency basis, adjusted operating income coming at $3.87 billion. That was down roughly 24% year over year on a constant Forex rate. Net earnings coming in at $3.4 billion. That was also down 20%. And then adjusted EPS coming in at $3.98. That was down 20% year over year. We see their expectations were closer to $4.00 for the fiscal 2023 and then for next year expectations are closer to three dollars and 63 cents that would represent roughly a decline of 8.6 percent on a year over year basis for that eps number now they did provide full year 2024 guidance sales to be expected between 141 and 145 billion that would be just one to four percent growth year over year on that sales side expectations were closer to Let's see, I believe 144 billion. Yeah, so a bit on the higher end for that top line. And then on that bottom line, adjusted EPS, Walgreens announced guidance of $3.20 to $3.50. Again, expectations were closer to $3.63. And this would represent a decline of close to 20 to 12%. So a big decline again on that EPS side. And so Walgreens posted a big decline this year on that EPS and then expected to post another big decline next year. You can take that midpoint to be somewhere in that $3.30 of EPS. And so that will bring this price to earnings higher than six. It'll still remain cheap on a relative basis. Look, it'll still be close to maybe eight, nine times a price to earnings, which on a relative basis is still cheap. But consider the fact that this earnings needs to be revised down and then so do every subsequent year and so a company that is declining earnings on maybe 12 to 15 percent year over year and is only growing sales maybe one percent how much of a price to earnings would you really want to put on that i certainly would give that single digits price to earnings and so even at eight to nine times walgreens still isn't super undervalued considering its growth rates now, in regards to the lower guidance, Walgreens did say it's facing a number of headwinds, that being lower sale and leaseback activity, higher tax rates, lower COVID-19 contribution. This has been a big, big headwind for Walgreens. This was this year and supposedly now next year. We do know the effects of the pandemic are sort of wearing off and a company like Walgreens is hit really hard because of that. Consumer sentiment and spending is still down and then ongoing reimbursement and then higher wages and inflation certainly hits a company like Walgreens. Now, in terms of the big news, which I think is the reason shares are up over 7% in the trade today, that being Walgreens announces a new CEO, Tim Wentworth. And I think this guy is, he's coming over from Cigna Health Services and is a respected name in the healthcare space. He has over three decades of experience and leadership in healthcare. And so him coming over and replacing the exiting CEO, Roz Brewer, I think is a big sigh of relief for investors. I think they were just waiting to see who would be announced as the replacement CEO. And I think him having certain amount of experience and this name in the healthcare space certainly helps investors. Now, he does have his work cut out for him at Walgreens. It won't be easy as Walgreens CIO has also left about two weeks ago. This was announced the chief and information officer over at Walgreens had left. This is alongside obviously the CEO, Roz Brewer, 
as well as the CFO, James Kehoe. And so really upper management is being fully shaken out and a whole new C-suite is coming over at Walgreens and certainly they have to increase the morale, really change up the style of working over at Walgreens. Now, the incoming CEO also has a tough job ahead of him as Walgreens employees walk off the job to protest pharmacy conditions. And this came out early on in the week on Monday as Walgreens employees walked out of the job in protest to say that they were increasingly miserable based on their working conditions. And so they said Walgreens, they don't believe Walgreens is allowing us to give patients safe care on a daily basis. And it's sort of too much work for the pharmacists and they're stressed out over unrealistic performance requirements. And so on the conference call, Tim Wentworth or really any of the executives did not address this issue of the walkout that's been ongoing from Monday through Wednesday of this week. And so certainly this will affect employees and Walgreens' revenues, profitabilities. They are experiencing lots of store closures as well due to high theft in the U.S. and as well as closing unprofitable stores. And so there's a ton of bad news going around Walgreens. And I think the new management, whoever that is, Tim Wentworth, along with the new CFO and new CIO, will really have to increase the morale and improve the workflow over at Walgreens. Now, taking a look at the numbers for this most recent quarter over at Walgreens, it actually wasn't too bad comparatively. This is a three months ended August 31st picture, and then we have a 12 months ended August 31st on the right hand column. So sales in this most recent quarter coming in at 35.4 billion. That was roughly 9% growth on a year over year basis. So sales rising nicely. Now the cost of sales also did increase roughly in line. And so their gross profit coming in roughly flat year over year at 6.4 billion dollars. Now they are still spending more on SGNA than their gross profit. And so the operating losses are still piling on. They did lose less money though this quarter, just losing $450 million compared to a loss of $822 million same time last year. On a full year basis, this paints a very ugly picture as they lost roughly $6.8 billion on an operating basis this year, whereas in 2022, they were generating $1.3 billion worth of operating profit. And that sort of just trickles down to their net loss. You see in this most recent quarter, Walgreens losing $180 million. And the same time last year, they lost roughly $415 million. So on a year over year picture, Walgreens is improving substantially. However, if you stretch back their numbers across the entire year, it does not paint a pretty picture as they lost roughly $3 billion on that bottom line compared to an earnings of $4.3 billion back in 2022. Now, I also want to take a look at their weighted shares outstanding. You see, as the stock has been an absolute really free fall over the past one year, Walgreens's shares outstanding have not gone down substantially. And so Walgreens hasn't been buying back share. And there's a few reasons for that. And we'll get into that. But mainly it's because they just simply can't. They don't have enough cash on their balance sheet. And taking a look at cash, we see on their balance sheet, they have roughly $700 million worth of cash and cash equivalents. That is down roughly half from same time last year. And even you see their marketable securities have been basically shaved off down from $1.1 billion to basically zero in this most recent quarter. Now they do have roughly $5.3 billion of accounts receivables and $8.2 billion worth of inventories, which makes up most of their total current assets at $15.5 billion. Now, in my opinion, inventories of $8.2 billion are far too high for Walgreens, even accounts receivables. I think having this much cash is certainly not enough. And this is one of the reasons they are unable to really spend their cash to do something like a buyback when their stock is in absolute free fall. It's because they simply don't have the cash on their balance sheet. Now they do still have a decent amount of non-current assets, especially in property plant and equipment, as well as operating lease rights. And so total assets coming in at $96 billion. Now they do have a fair portion of short-term debt, roughly $900 million. And you see their short-term debt is exceeding their cash and cash equivalents. And so even the fact that Walgreens will be needing to pay out the short-term debt over the next 12 months is a bit concerning for investors. This balance sheet is really not in a great spot and it doesn't give Walgreens really the flexibility to do a whole lot of things. Now they do also have a ton of accounts payable, roughly $12.6 billion 
along with another $8.4 billion worth of accrued expenses. And so their total liability is coming at $24.5 billion. This is also significantly higher than their total current assets. And so over the next 12 months, Walgreens' balance sheet does not paint a pretty picture. They have a lot more liabilities than assets that are needing to be paid off within the next 12 months. They do still have a large portion of long-term debt, which they are looking to retire slowly, which is good because I'm sure Walgreens is paying a ton of interest on this long-term debt. But overall, because this balance sheet is quite poor, this is the reason why I can't give Walgreens the pass. I can't come in here and maybe step in and look to buy this stock is because, look, if they're posting another year of declining EPS, and they just posted a year of declining EPS of roughly 20% as well, and then they have very little cash on their balance sheet and a ton of debt, I think this company is in serious jeopardy over the next 12 months and sure they're going to do a bunch of cost savings and cost cuts and they've been saying that really for over a year and I haven't seen that materialize and based on their guidance for fiscal 2024 I don't see that materializing to the point where they can really improve their balance sheet and so I think Walgreens might have to do share dilution by issuing more shares possibly raising even more debt in order to just pay off their current liabilities and so because this balance sheet is in such a bad spot, that is the reason why I can't get behind a stock like this. Now, moving on to their cash flows, we bring down that net loss of $3.5 billion. That is far lower than a net earnings of roughly $4 billion back in 2022. They do add back some depreciation and amortization. They also add back roughly $6.4 billion worth of accrued litigation obligations, which brings their net cash positive to $2.2 billion in this most recent 12 months. Now, in my opinion, adding back the $6.3 billion worth of accrued litigation obligations should really not be a thing. I know this is based on like generally accepted accounting principles and stuff, but I think in one way or another, Walgreens will have to pay their lawyers, will have to pay their fines and litigation obligations. And so certainly adding this number back in makes their cash flow look far better than really what it should be. This should be a negative cash flow number of close to, I'd say, three or four billion dollars. And so in that case, Walgreens' cash flow is also not good. And so if you're not even really making positive cash flow, you don't have the opportunity to bolster on cash, to pay down debt, and your balance sheet will continue to remain in a bad spot. Now, even taking this $2.2 billion worth of positive cash flow on face value, let's just see how Walgreens really uses it. They buy roughly $2 billion of property plant equipment. They also are buying businesses that have a ton of debt. You see net of cash acquired based on businesses and acquisitions. They acquired roughly $7.3 billion worth of debt on their acquisitions. And so based on their investing activities, they spent roughly $3 billion dollars of that cash flow and then along with that they are paying down some debt roughly 8.9 billion dollars worth of debt they paid back but they reissued 6.2 billion dollars worth of new debt so i'm guessing just refinanced this existing debt and then the most important thing come down to cash dividends paid you see that is at 1.6 billion dollars that didn't move from a year ago so walgreens didn't increase their dividend and i'm sure they won't be able to for a while but even paying $1.6 billion worth of dividends in a full year when you're earning just $2.2 billion worth of free cash flow, and especially in a year where they're expected EPS to go down another 20%, I think Walgreens might make the dreaded announcement of a dividend cut in order to really just stay afloat. If they continue to pay off dividends at this rate, this company is in no position to really do that as they have a ton of debt, they don't have enough cash. And I think if Walgreens does make the dreaded announcement of a dividend cut, I think the stock will absolutely tank. And I think the last of the investors will run from Walgreens. I think the only people left in the stock are really just holding on because of that 8% dividend. And really, I think the board is doing everything they can in order to avoid making the announcement of a dividend cut. But in my opinion, I think that is coming sooner or later for Walgreens. Now moving on to the technicals for Walgreens. This one has been absolutely falling over the past really five years. We can pull up a five year of this company and it's gone nowhere but down. Now on a more shorter term, this is following a 
sort of downtrending trend line where the resistance is at close to $30 per share. Now it has seen a nice rally from lows of $20 per share up to $24 per share. Now I think in my opinion, I would still steer clear from Walgreens. It is in a very much of a downtrend and really would be until it comes back and tests this resistance close to $30 per share. Now I know that is a big jump from here, close to 25 to 26%. And you guys might be saying, well, if you come in here and maybe look to buy at $30 per share, did you not just miss out on 30% worth of gains? And to that, I would say, sure, I did miss out on 30% of gains. But in my opinion, I think from here, it could very well get rejected and continue to head lower. This stock has been making a series of lower highs and lower lows. And until that trend breaks, I'm not ready to believe Walgreens is ready to go higher. I believe its worst days still might be ahead, believe it or not. And so if it comes to $30 per share and gets rejected, yeah, I still won't step in. I need to see Walgreens post a very strong green candle above this level in order to just really consider this stock over the next year. This has a ton of pain ahead as they've guided EPS to be lower on flat sales and so certainly Walgreens does not have a bright future over the next quarter or really over the next 12 months it's what really they do after that and this new CEO and new management really has to stick around for two three years in order to turn around the business over at Walgreens I still am not a believer I do think a dreaded dividend cut is coming sometime this year and if that is the case then this stock has no floor and could see lows of possibly 10 to $15 per share. I really won't be surprised. That was my take on Walgreens Boots Alliance. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comment section below. Are you believing that new management can come in here and sort of turn around this business over the next 12 months? Or do you think Walgreens will certainly need to see a dramatic change in their fundamentals? And really, I think their balance sheet is what scares me the most. I would like to see that balance sheet change before I come in here and really consider picking up shares of Walgreens. Let me know what you guys think of Walgreens in the comment section below. As always, thanks so much for listening and I'll see you guys in the next video.